We're seeing like two seconds of an ad and then all of a sudden it's like, this was banned because it threatened the heterodoxy. Specials that pandered to Me Too hysteria. One of the ads featured a white man having to be restrained by a black man in case he acted out on his rapey instincts. Black men in TV commercials are almost universally portrayed. Wait, 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 wait. Was that the Gillette ad? Wasn't that what? No, this one's all about toxic masculinity. Holy f. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> your own bias confirmation there. <laughs> Been a while since we've enjoyed. Remember when TV commercials used to inform you about the product being sold? If you've got wood to stain and you want it to dry quickly, use one seal quick dry and wood stain. It does exactly oh. what it says on the tin. Yeah, I'm oh, old enough to remember nice. that. Well, now advertisers are getting a little more ambitious. Why waste time on the product being sold when the product being sold is you? Behold our newest ad campaign. Tasty! Did you just unironically share a Stone Toss cartoon without acknowledging that Stone Toss is a fucking neo-Nazi Paul Joseph Watson? Holy shit! Wow, I didn't know it's been that bad. Alright. Maybe he'll add something at the end. By the way, this happens to be a neo-Nazi, but it's still funny. Are you sure this will help us sell more burgers? Burgers? John Lewis recently released an nope, ad for home nope, insurance. Nope, that's it, just straight up sharing Stone Toss? Okay, alright then. Message received. Bring a young boy wearing a dress, makeup, and heel. You sure this will help us sell more home insurance? Kids play dress up all the time. This. That's not even a woke ad. Like, that, that just happens. Little cis boys will, will dress up in, in their mother's clothing and wear makeup. It has nothing to do with, like. Where, where are you going with this, Paul? Insurance? Home insurance? Within weeks, the ad was cancelled. Not because of its ethically dubious amplification of drag queen kids, but ah. because it was deemed potentially misleading. Because you can't claim home insurance for allowing your kid to trash your home. Maybe if John Lewis had actually concentrated on the details of their service rather than their effusive zeal to portray a boy in lipstick, the ad wouldn't have been banned. But it's not really about the product anymore, is it? This year's mm. Halloween ad for Twix chocolate bar features a boy face discrimination for wearing a princess dress. A witch nanny then comes to the boy's aid after he's confronted by a bully. Hey, you! Princess! You look like a girl! Why are you wearing that? The witch nanny then conjures up a magic trick to disappear the bully. So parents leave a kid alone until the new nanny comes. She forces herself in, then murders a playground boy. All because he said they look different. Are you sure this will help us sell more Twix? Objectively, what's going to be worse in terms of, I don't know, exposing people to propaganda? Stone Toss, again, the neo-Nazi cartoonist, or that advertising. Like, the idea of ads taking political stances is absolutely nothing new. And the idea of, like, we're almost done, I think, the quote-unquote woke advertising cycle. They're probably going to move on to the next big thing. Advertising comes in cycles. Typically what works is then emulated time and time again. So they'll take social causes and then they'll try to turn it into a brand. It's just them following the Overton window. It's not the opposite way. It's not as if by doing that they're then influencing culture. They see the way culture is and then they want to reflect it to sell you something. That's what goes on. Twix? But hey, who am I to judge? Why shouldn't young children be exposed to the alphabet experience? After all, it's such a healthy lifestyle when kids aren't being bombarded by gender-bending... So, uh, it's, it's not the lifestyle itself that causes that, it's, it's you. It's you, Paul. You, you cause. Like, what you are saying right now, all these, uh, vilifications, that's, that's what directly, uh, sorry, directly contributes towards their very high rates of, uh, suicidal ideation. It doesn't come, uh, from something to do inherently with being gay, or being trans, or even being queer. None of that. It has to do with people like you on the internet who vilify them confusion, they're being blitzed with pandemic porn. Last year, the NHS terrified children by showing Santa being wheeled into the hospital on the verge of dying of COVID. Heineken, the beer company that proudly supports the total abolition of all borders, at least remains consistent by insisting that there shouldn't be any borders when it comes to public toilets. 
but only if you've had your shot and displayed your vaccine passport. In what has to be the most obtuse, left field and awkward strong arming of social engineering into a crisp commercial ever seen, Grandad dies, goes to heaven and comes back as a gay ghost. Ah, hermano, como te extraño. Oh, tío Alberto! Alberto! Qué sorpresa. Qué hubo le familia. ¿Cómo están? ¿Quién es él? Es Mario, mi pareja. Are you sure this will help us sell more Doritos? <laughs> he still keeps... I can't believe this. In like an entire episode where Paul Joseph Watson wants to call out what he sees as degenerate propaganda, he keeps referring to an actual Stone Toss cartoon, a neo-Nazi, to be like, hey, by the way, this will exemplify my point yet again. Doritos? Look at this charmingly quaint snapshot of suburban British life. By the way, like, you have to be clear, what he's upset with here is not the fact that these commercials are trying to sell you products that could be either damaging to yourself or uh, they're not necessary in your life or there's like hyperconsumption or anything like that. It's 100% the method in which they're using to advertise to you. This is once again culture war like uh, culture war outrage you have to manufacture it make sure everyone's nice and like can you believe not only do people nowadays talk about these issues as if they are somehow something that we should want in modern day society but now we see it advertised in the very products the products that were sacred to us are sacred commercials like who cares everyone hates commercials Every single time there's an ad break, people either mute it, they go do something else. Like, no one's ever enjoyed commercials. Uh, the commercials are terrible, okay? There's no one here who's going to defend, like, well, you know, the, our commercials used to be sacred, but now, now they are degenerate. Degenerate! Bingo like a boss. Bag a 50 pound welcome bonus when you join Lava Bingo. Bear in mind, this is an ad for Bingo, which has an age demographic not much lower than the Queen of England. Bingo. Are you sure this will help us sell more Bingo? Bingo? Just saw something incredible. <laughs> it's the one joke, eh? This is, this is unreal. ...ably rare the other day. A white heterosexual man in a TV commercial. And get this, he wasn't being humiliated. Incredible, I know. Barely believe. Did I miss that? Is, is Was that a big advertising thing? They would just, you know, vilify heterosexual men? White heterosexual men? They were just going to, like, show up and be like, <laughs> I like vaginas, doy doy, and then fall over. And then I was like, oh, God, yet another one of those. How could this happen? Believable. I mean, it was Chris Hemsworth, but still, makes a change, doesn't it? What do they want for Father's Day? Uh, for the media to stop portraying dads as buffoons. Doofus dads, right? I mean, like, that's all we ever see. It's just a burst pipe. I can fix it. <laughs> and my husband is, uh... Uh, you missed a spot. <laughs> Excuse me. See you. This has been an archetype since Homer Simpson. Yes, it's a very popular one. Shake and let Oven Pride do its thing so he can do more. Oven Pride. So easy, a man can do it. Okay, maybe it was my fault. <laughs> she told me to Yeah, sorry, Fred weeds. Flintstone, probably. Along with the grass. I used the wrong stuff. Oh, there were dead spots everywhere. That's making dinner. Oh, it'll be fine. Maybe. It used to be that TV ads made fun of men for being unable last one to even care bad? for babies. But that wasn't subversively antinatal enough. Now women can't be shown to be caring for babies because that would further gender stereotypes. The UK Advertising Standards Authority... Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Oh, these are all such non-problems. ...authority banned this Volkswagen commercial after just three people complained.
Note how the only stereotypes they refuse to amplify are the ones that are positive and wholesome. An ad for Apple's iPad Pro encouraged women to erase men altogether. I'm someone different. I'm free. It's a male genocide. Male genocide, Apple. Sort yourselves Another out. Another Apple commercial showed cloned white men jumping into the sea like lemmings. This PC specialist ad was banned in the UK for perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes because it didn't feature any women. Despite PC specialists' core market being 87.5% male. Furthering harmful negative stereotypes about men, however, is not only allowed, it's gleefully encouraged. Gillette's CEO said an $8 billion write-down on its shaving business how are you this fragile like genuinely how are you this fragile like i don't give a fuck about what advertisements do in terms of advertising i i would rather not have to watch advertisements ever ever so i don't care like that, this doesn't even seem like a ground to like have like this is the next arena in the culture war we have to know exactly what are they saying about white cis hetero men make the ads more wholesome for me why why do you want to watch advertisements paul like <laughs> This was a price worth paying for a divisive series. And yeah, no, I definitely think he's leaving things out. We're seeing like two seconds of an ad and then all of a sudden it's like, this was banned because it threatened the heterodoxy. Officials that pandered to Me Too hysteria. One of the ads featured a white man having to be restrained by a black man in case he acted out on his rapey instincts. Black men in TV commercials are almost universally portrayed. Wait, 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 wait. Was that the Gillette ad? Wasn't that what? No, this one's all about toxic masculinity. Holy fuck. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> your own bias confirmation there. <laughs> Casey acted out on his rapey instinct. Slack men in TV commercials are almost universally portrayed as cool, reliable, strong, and masculine. And <laughs> you are so insecure. <laughs> Whatever happened to the cool white men? <laughs> wrong with that? In a culture dominated by the likes of Lil Nas X, providing black kids with good, wholesome, fatherly role models is no bad thing. Unfortunately, when it comes to white people, we're being provided with a very different kind of role model. Here's one for you. When mixed race... Do you ever think that maybe the idea behind that kind of marketing is to get people like you to talk about it, to, to provoke something within you? Because otherwise you just sit, sit through the like the 15 second ad and be like, yeah, I, I, I don't want insurance. I don't care. Next, yeah, I don't want a car. I can't afford it. I don't care. Next, yeah, I don't want car insurance. I, I don't have a car. I can't afford that either. So next... <laughs> families or couples are portrayed in TV commercials, which is basically 90% of the time now. Why is the father or the man always black and the woman always white? Why is it hardly <laughs> ever the other way around? <laughs> Again, so insecure. Can I help you, mate? Do you think these glasses suit me? No. Oh, right. Do you not see the problem there, Paul Joseph Watson, was dude number one being an incredible creep? Like, are you not going to call out, maybe you shouldn't walk up to a window and stand to a woman's dresser? You know, like, that's that, that's kind of a problem as well. Alexa, drop in on Charlie. She knows her destination, and it's a town called... It's 2021, and he is worried about race mixing. That is, that is what's happening here right now. Winning! It's not just limited to TV commercials either. So I think earlier someone was asking, is this a dog whistle? Uh, you got some dog sirens going down right now. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, fuck off. That last one was just two kids. <laughs> what, do you think they're in a relationship? What is that pedo shit? Like, yeah, th these are children just hanging out. <laughs> you can't conflate all these images. It's the same thing. What are you doing? <laughs> Look at the degeneracy. <laughs> Kindergartners, <laughs> mixed race couples. <laughs> Last 
one was just a painting. A lot of these aren't even supposed to be couples. They could just be friends. Some of them are children. What is wrong with you? You're so fucked up. Oh my god. Paul. Oh. That was a coloring book. The last one was a coloring book. <laughs>
into what became known as the engineering of consent. In 1929, Bernays <laughs> so used close. advertising to get women hooked on cigarettes, claiming it's they were true. a symbol of feminism. If that this was happening nearly a hundred years ago, how naive would we be to think it isn't happening now? Well, if he's saying we should just get rid of ads, I mean, uh, this is a new Paul Joseph Watson, I didn't know, but I'm, I'm here for it, Paul. A few years ago, commercials were about convincing you that consumerism would provide a facsimile of spiritual fulfillment. That phase, as cringe as it was, has been replaced by an altogether more potent brand of behavioural psychology. We've entered the age of direct, sustained, mass social engineering. It's uh. everywhere, it's relentless, and to be honest, it's downright creepy. Recoloured in seven luscious hues. Just... My question would then be, what is the motive behind, say, Lucky Charms trying to promote uh, this secret agenda of race mixing? Like, what does Lucky Charms get out of that? Like, when the board of CEOs meet together, they sit down and like, uh, you know, we're going to make this uh, cereal for kids. And let's make sure, of course, that we promote our secret agenda of race mixing. Like, what, what exactly, what are they gaining by that? impulses are being redirected but some people have just had enough yeah, oh, I remember this. Yeah. if you don't know this clip and it's one that so many conservatives were just like overjoyed with glee because obviously they talk about being anti-censorship they're pro-censorship when it's things that they don't like i mean it's just the massive hypocrisy and this was a case of an okay cupid ad being on like a subway i think it was in new york and people just ripping them down because they were just like disgusted by what it showed no, it's not. It's wrong. This is propaganda. Yeah. This is normalizing. Propaganda. Normalizing. Yeah. Advertising is propaganda. Is Always TV has TV been. TV told them not to, not to get the, not and to get. This whole thing is like the astronaut meme, just over and over and over. Always has been. <laughs> upset. The Biden Congress. That's what the Chinese want. <laughs> They're trying to sell us something! They, they, like, they, they're not just putting this up for no reason! They're actually trying to sell us something right now! The government is against us, and you guys don't see it. You guys think that you take a vaccine and this is gonna go away? It's never gonna go away. So we, the people, say we don't want this anymore. <laughs> you know the phrase, get woke, go broke? Well, it's not just a cliche. Studies show that audiences want to be entertained by ads. They want the ads to make them laugh. They don't want to be lectured. But there's, quote, clear evidence that there's been a consistent, long-time decline in the use of humour in advertising. Studies. Advertisements used to be cheeky. Some of them would poke fun at received wisdom. They Man, it would be so much easier to be a conservative, like, video producer. All you gotta do is say something, doesn't matter if it's factually correct. You don't have to put, it, the, like, the study up in your description. Just look at the, co like, the collected works of Lauren Southern. Every single time. She'll be like, yeah, study after study shows. What studies? Are they gonna be in the description when I click on them? No, they're not. There's nothing here. So now I have to track down the small little clip you've given me a sample of that you're trying to use to prove your point, find out where it's from, read the entire thing myself, because you haven't done it, and then find out it says the exact opposite of what you're telling me out loud right now. They'd invoke taboos, challenge turgid top-down imposed norms and social Oh, look it up, Squid. Now That's they just thing. amplify establishment narratives to browbeat you into mass ideological conformity. Industry figures show that woke ads are uns- Okay, Cupid responds to video showing LGBTQ friendly ads torn down. My God. My God, look at this. Children were exposed to this. Okay, Cupid has responded to a viral video online that shows a woman and two other people tearing down advertisement for the company's new every single person ad campaign in a New York subway while calling the ads propaganda and too risque for children featuring queer people, pansexuality, and people who identify as non-binary. My God, I can't believe it. And yet, military recruitment ads. Does any of them have a problem with any of that? I don't care how innocuous it is. I, like, I don't care if all of it says is like US Army, join, nothing else. Like, that's, this is the problem you have? This is what is like, oh my god, it's going to affect the generation. This is disgusting, she says. This isn't about equality, you guys. It's about communism. <laughs> it's about communism. They're selling us on communism. She's not wrong. No, it's not. 
Normalizing, normalizing. Normalizing degeneracy. Yeah. I don't know why no, like no one sees this. No. This is disgusting. Because TV told them not to, not to get uh, not to get upset and wear the mask. We're going over there. Let's go to the bath. I mean, serious. No masks in the subway too, eh? We're, we're, the war, we're in the wars, actually. Uh, this one is this one over oh, here. Look at, it's like three. Look at that. It's like a three-way. My God. That's, that's pretty good. That's look pretty good. this one. Yeah, I mean, like, if kids saw that, they might try to stick their fingers through apples, and then what are we going to have? Romantic. <laughs> Nicely done, babe. Nicely done. You're doing it. The revolution is televised. They're trying to divide and conquer us. The government is against us. I think there's some other things going on. I think if we uh, were to ask this individual uh, her stance on, let's say, uh, I don't know, vaccines, mask mandates, we might get some interesting answers. You guys don't see it. You guys don't see it. Oh, there it is. She just said it out loud. You think you're going to take the vaccine and it'll just go away? Of course. The targeted ads were part of a campaign from the online dating company to recognize its users openly and proudly while also addressing some taboos in dating, like non-monogamy. After the incident, OkCupid released a statement condemning what it called extreme reaction to the ad. At OkCupid, we celebrate love for every single person, regardless of identity, ethnicity, race, orientation, or gender. Many have reached out to us with heartfelt reactions to our every single person campaign. A much smaller few have had shocking vitriolic reactions to it, but these reactions only serve to make it more clear that we must continue to champion all people. When you're when you feel you're hitting a nerve, that's okay. The most important thing, though, is that we're supportive of all our daters. Like, without a like, without question. Okay, the whole thing was done to be a little bit provocative because, of course, when you do such things, this will happen. You will get a reaction, and like, I'm sure they weren't planning on it being a viral video where someone's actually ripping the ads down. I'm mean, gonna guess they thought it was going to be uh, a conservative uh, news cycle, the same way conservatives do the same thing. They intentionally try to do things so they'll get on media matters, right? Like the same thing is happening in the other direction by doing this, by making it very open, by talking about uh, topics that a lot of people find controversial. We, of course, will generate outrage by generating outrage. More people will talk about our advertising, which means more people will sign up to our website, which means more monies. The whole thing's about the monies. Successful at selling products. And yet, what else are we force-fed but woke ads? That doesn't make sense until you realize that you're the product. The actual number of <laughs> units sold is purely secondary. Remember that ominous ad busters? Imagine the day when you realize that advertising is trying to sell you something. When you realize that, when you come to that revelation, as clearly Paul Joseph Watson <laughs> just did. <laughs> PSA from the 90s. Your living room is the factory, the product being manufactured, is you. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, I guess uh, maybe you should start watching all those old Adbuster videos then. I think so. <laughs> Might be a good idea. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if you actually started to watch the content that Adbusters used to produce, I'm not sure you'd enjoy a lot of it. Might find it a little too woke. But uh, yes, please keep promoting Stone Toss cartoons on your show. Great, great job. Good job. Do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just. We will build a ladder to heaven to deliver you the daily news. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your most humble of clownish jesters. To our lords, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, you have our undying fealty. To our knights of the round table, Nate, that one guy, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Ants are still running the world, Coulter Smith, Tom Groh, Val 9000, Jenna Tal, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Riley and Anna, Omni, 
Poodle Hawk. The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janis, Lemmy 101, Anthropophojack, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemp Hog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We shall meet you in the tavern, and we raise a drink, and we salute you.